Welcome to Your Space Journey, where we venture into the future of space exploration. Your journey begins now. Welcome back to Your Space Journey. Uh, today, we're going to be taking a deep dive into SpaceX's Starship. Ah. Specifically, its heat shield, the system that keeps it from burning up when it comes back into the atmosphere. I mean, we're, we're talking temperatures that can reach 3,000 degrees Celsius. It's, it's pretty amazing yeah. that anything can survive that. Yeah, it, it really is. And what I think is so interesting here is that SpaceX has decided to take a very different approach than what we've seen in the past. You know, with the space shuttle, they use those really fragile ceramic tiles. Mm -hmm. um, but SpaceX is using stainless steel, and it's causing quite a bit of debate. You know, when I first heard stainless steel heat shield, Yeah. Honestly, I picture my kitchen sink. Um, so you have to help me out here a little bit. Why would they <laughs> choose to use stainless steel for something like this? Well, the type of stainless steel they're using, it's a grade called 304L. And it actually yeah. works really well for this. One of the biggest advantages is cost. You know, if you think about making all those ceramic mm -hmm. tiles and then you have to inspect them and replace them, it gets really expensive. Stainless steel is so much more affordable. Right, and that makes a lot of sense, especially when we think about how SpaceX is trying to make space travel more affordable in general. But yeah. can stainless steel really hold up to that kind of heat? Yeah, it, it can. Stainless steel has a really good strength to weight ratio, which mm -hmm. is super important for spacecraft. Yeah. It's it's really durable. It can handle multiple re-entries. So it's tough. It's cost effective. Yeah. But how does it actually work? How does it keep Starship from burning up? So they're using a combination of things. They've got some passive cooling mm. and some active cooling. Um, the passive protection, that comes from the chromium that's in the steel. When it gets heated, it forms a protective oxide layer. That's kind of like it's yeah. got its own armor. Exactly. It's self-healing. Um, but the really innovative part is the active cooling. They're using something called transpiration cooling. So basically they have all these tiny pores in the Starship's hull. And those pores release methane which is also what Starship uses for fuel. And that creates a layer of gas that protects the ship. It absorbs and dissipates the heat. Wow, that sounds really complicated. Has that ever been done before? It's been used in rocket engines, but this oh. is the first time yeah. that it's being used on an entire spacecraft. So yeah. it's definitely a bold move. Yeah, and I know it hasn't been all smooth sailing. I remember reading about those early tests yeah. where they saw some melting. Yeah and some discoloration on the heat shield. Yeah, you're right. Anytime you have new technology, especially something this ambitious, there are going to be yeah. challenges along the way. But those tests were really valuable. SpaceX got a lot of data from them, and it showed them where they needed to improve the design. So it was a learning process. Yeah, absolutely. SpaceX is constantly refining their designs. Based on the data from their tests and simulations, for example, they're trying out different ways to arrange the tiles to see if they can improve how the heat is distributed. And they're trying to address things like snap freeze, which is where the coolant freezes instantly because it evaporates sure. so quickly. So they're just really committed to yeah. making this work. And speaking of challenges, Starship's re-entry maneuver is pretty unusual, isn't it? That belly flop. Looks pretty intense. It is. The belly flop is how they slow Starship down so quickly. When it hits the atmosphere, they're increasing the drag. And that helps to spread the heat out over a larger area. So they're using the whole belly of the spacecraft. Yeah, as a break. Yeah, exactly. It's a smart way to deal with all that heat. But it does mean that a larger part of the spacecraft is exposed to those incredibly high temperatures. So the question is, can that stainless steel heat shield really hold up under all that stress? That is a great question. And it's something SpaceX is trying to answer. With each test flight, they're gathering data, yeah. analyzing it, yeah. and making changes. It's really fascinating to see how they're tackling this challenge. It is. And, you know, even though this is such a radical departure from the traditional way of designing heat shields, they're still using some lessons from the past, did mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> that the blue plasma glow that you see during Starship's reentry is actually caused by the borosilicate coating on the tiles. Really? Yeah. yeah. Had no idea. So there's still a connection there to the space shuttle's thermal protection system. Exactly. They're innovating, but so they're right. also using what we've learned from past missions. So it's a blend of yeah. the old and the new. Yeah. That's what makes Starship's development so interesting to watch. They're not afraid to try something completely new, but they're <laughs> also respecting the achievements of the past. They're really pushing the boundaries of space exploration. Okay, so we've talked about 
Some of the advantages of using stainless steel, mm. like how cost effective it is right. and how tough it is. But what about the downsides? There have to be some disadvantages. Right. You're right. There are always trade offs. Yeah. So while stainless steel is really tough, it's not quite as good at handling extreme heat as some other materials, like those ceramic tiles. So SpaceX has to come up with these innovative cooling systems, like the transpiration cooling we talked about. So it's all about yep. finding the right balance mm -hmm. between the materials yeah. and the cooling system. Exactly. And another challenge is weight. Stainless steel is lighter than some materials, but it's still heavier than SpaceX would like. Mm. And in spaceflight, every ounce counts. So they have to figure out how yeah. to make the heat shield as light as possible mm -hmm. while still making sure that it's strong enough to protect the spacecraft. Exactly. It's always a challenge in aerospace engineering, finding that balance between strength and lightness. Okay, so stainless steel has its pros and cons, but overall, it seems yeah. like a pretty smart solution for Starship's heat shield. I agree. I think it shows how SpaceX is willing to think outside the box. They're not afraid to take risks and challenge the way things have always been done. And that's what's so exciting to see. It's really pushing the boundaries yeah. of what's possible in space exploration. It's amazing to think about all the engineering that goes into something like this. Mm -hmm. It's not just a big piece of metal, right? Right. There's a lot of thought that goes into the design. You know those hexagonal tiles we've been talking about? The shape yeah. and how they fit together. That helps to distribute the heat evenly and efficiently. So it's like a giant jigsaw puzzle that keeps Starship from yeah. falling apart. Kind of. And they're always adjusting the design based on what they learn from each flight. Some tiles are thicker, some are thinner. They're placed in specific spots to handle more heat. It's all about optimization. It seems like everything SpaceX does is driven by data. Absolutely. They're not just relying on theory. They're using real world data to make decisions, test, analyze, refine, repeat. That's how they operate. And it's a good reminder that those early tests, even the ones where we saw some melting, those weren't failures. They were opportunities to learn. Exactly. They gave SpaceX valuable insights into how the heat shield performs, and they helped them figure out what needed to be improved. It's like they're turning those setbacks into opportunities to grow. That's a big part of their success. They're not afraid to experiment, and they're willing to take risks, which is so important when you're trying to innovate. And speaking of innovation, you mentioned earlier yeah. that SpaceX is using a hybrid approach. Yeah. They're not getting rid of ceramic tiles altogether. Right. They're still using them in okay. certain areas where the heat is most intense, like the nose cone yeah. and the leading edges. So they're combining the durability of stainless steel yeah. with the heat resistance of ceramic tiles. Yeah. It's about choosing the best material for each specific job. Okay, so we've talked a lot about yeah. how this heat shield works, but mm. I think it's important to step back for a moment mm. and, and talk about why this is so significant. Why should people care about Starship's heat shield? That's a great point. This is about more than just protecting one spacecraft. It's about SpaceX's vision. For the future of space travel, they want to make it reusable and sustainable. So it's not just about the technology itself, it's about what that technology makes possible. Exactly. It's about making space travel more affordable, more accessible, so that more people can experience space. And maybe one day, we can become a multi-planetary species. I'm sure some people might think that sounds a little far-fetched. But when you look at what SpaceX has already done, it's hard not to be impressed. Yeah, they've accomplished some incredible things. And their work on Starship is just another example. But I'm curious, what are some of the challenges that SpaceX still needs to overcome with this heat shield technology? Well, one of the biggest challenges is making sure mm. that the heat shield is durable wow. and reusable in the long term. You know, stainless steel is tough, but when it's exposed to extreme heat over and over again, it can start to degrade. So it's not enough yeah. for it to survive one re-entry. It has to be able to do it multiple times without needing major repairs. Right. SpaceX wants Starship to be able to fly many missions with as little downtime as possible. So the heat shield needs to be incredibly robust. So how are they addressing that? They're constantly analyzing data from the test flights, looking for any signs of wear and tear. And they're experimenting with different coatings to that make is. the steel more resistant to heat and oxidation. It's like they're putting armor on the heat shield. Well, it's a good way to think about it. And they're also yeah. looking at new manufacturing techniques, oh. like 3D printing to create more advanced heat shield designs. It seems like they're really going all out to make this work. They are. They're pushing the limits of material science 
and engineering. Yeah. And don't forget about that transpiration cooling system. It's a brilliant idea, but it also comes with its own challenges. Right, like that snap freeze problem. That sounds pretty serious. It is, but SpaceX is aware of it, and they're working on solutions. They want to make sure that the coolant flows smoothly and that there are no blockages. It's really amazing to see how they're tackling all of these complex engineering problems. <laughs> yeah, it is. And then there's the challenge of scaling up this technology to work with Starship's massive size. I mean, it's the largest spacecraft ever built. Right. It's designed to carry up to 100 people to Mars. Wow. So what works on a smaller test vehicle doesn't necessarily work yeah. on a full-scale Starship. Exactly. Everything is amplified. When you increase the size, the heat loads, the stresses, the amount of coolant you need, SpaceX has to make sure that their design can protect the entire spacecraft during those intense re-entries. That's a huge challenge, but if anyone can do it, it's probably SpaceX. I agree. They've proven time and time again that they're capable of overcoming incredible challenges. Their work on Starship is a great example of that. It's really yeah. inspiring to see them pushing the boundaries of space exploration. Yeah, it really is remarkable what they're doing at SpaceX. They're taking on so many challenges at the same time, like oh. the material, science, yeah, the engineering. But through all of it, they just seem to have yeah. this incredible optimism and ambition. Mm. Yeah, and, and I think that's like what sets them apart. They really mm. believe that they can do anything. And they inspire others to believe it, too. It's contagious. It really is. Yeah. So, I guess as we wrap up our deep dive into Starship's heat shield, what are some of the key takeaways? What's the big picture here? No, I think one of the biggest things is that SpaceX is really challenging the way things have always been done in space exploration. They're not yeah. just following in other people's footsteps. They're making their own path. Yeah. And they're doing that yeah. by taking risks, by mm -hmm. embracing innovation, yeah. and by learning from their mistakes. Exactly. They're showing us that it's okay to fail as long as you learn from it mm -hmm. and get better. And that's true, not just for space exploration, but for anything where you're mm. trying to do something really new and innovative. That's a great point. And it's not like cat. They're just throwing things at a wall mm -hmm. and seeing what sticks. They have a very deliberate approach. It's data-driven mm. and iterative. Right. They're constantly yeah. testing, analyzing, refining. They're not afraid to make big changes. If that's, that's what the data tells them to do. So for anyone out there who's interested in space travel and wants to see humanity, reach for the stars. Starship is a real symbol of hope. It represents yeah. our ambition, our ingenuity, our desire to push the limits. I, I completely agree. Starship shows us what we can accomplish when we dream big yeah. and work together. Well, thank you so much for taking this deep dive with us. And a big thank you to our expert for explaining all of this incredible engineering. It's been my pleasure. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Your Space Journey. Until next time, keep looking up and never stop exploring. Your Space Journey.